This is Bob Capetta, and this lesson is on calculus optimization problems. So we have a farmer who wishes to build a three-sided pen with a total of 800 feet of fencing. How should that fence be constructed to maximize the area? So three sides. The fourth side we could assume is the wall of the building. He has a total of 800 feet to build that fence. How should he build it so he gets the biggest possible pen? That's our question. So we're told he has 800 feet of fencing. So this x plus this x plus this y would use up the full 800 feet of fencing. So that's our first equation. x plus x plus y has to be 800. Of course, x plus x is the same as 2x. We get 2x plus y is 800. And it'll actually be helpful for us to solve for y. So subtracting 2x from both sides, we get y is 800 minus 2x. Now our goal is to maximize the area. So how big should that be? Well, what is the area? Area of a rectangle is length y times width x. So the area is y times x or x times y. We know what y is. y is 800 minus 2x. So I can substitute that 800 minus 2x in for y. So I get area as a function of one variable, a of x, is x times 800 minus 2x. And that's what we want to optimize. We want to find the highest possible value for that a of x. So how do we do that? So there's our function area of the value x, the width of the rectangle of the pen. Distributing the x, we get 800x minus 2x squared. Now I want to optimize that, so I'm going to take the first derivative and find points where the first derivative is 0 to find the critical values. So a prime of x is 800 minus 4x. Setting that equal to 0, we get 0 is 800 minus 4x, or 4x is 800, and my critical value is going to be what? Is going to be 200. Now, does that give us a maximum value? Now, now, remember, we really need to use some kind of a test to determine if our critical value is a minimum or a maximum. So what do we know now? We know our critical value. We know our critical value is 200. And I suggest that we use the second derivative test on this. So I have my first derivative. Uh, my function is there. There's a of x. There's a prime of x. How about a double prime? A double prime is negative 4. We want to use the second derivative test. Negative 4, that's concave down. So if that's concave down, we know our value at our critical value, our point at our critical value is going to be a maximum. So indeed, by the second derivative test, we know we'll have a maximum area when x equals 200. Well, what is that? x is 200. This x is 200. We certainly can figure out what y is, and we can figure out what the maximum area is going to be. So this is what we know. x is 200. So y is 800 minus 2x, plugging in 200 for x. 800 minus 2 times 200, 800 minus 400, y is 400. So we know it will be a maximum based on the second derivative test. Maximum area when x is 200 and y is 400. So what is that maximum area? Area is x times y. So area is 200 times 400, which is 8 followed by four zeros, 80,000. So that tells me that I have a maximum area of 80,000 square feet when x is 200 feet. The two parallel sides are 200 feet. And the perpendicular side y is 400 feet. That's how we should design that pen to get our maximum area. Okay, our next question is to find the points on the ellipse 4x squared plus y squared equals 4 that are the farthest away from the point 1, 0. So let's look at a visual of that. What is that going to look like? We have an ellipse. We have the point 1, 0, which is here. And we have all of these points. Now notice this one is two units away. This one would be, let's see, one over two up. That would be root five away. Is there some point over here somewhere that's more than root five? 
some point down here, similar kind of thing. So we are looking for the points, again, they're the farthest away, which as far as we can go from one zero, yet still be on this ellipse. So we want to think about what that's going to be. So I recognize if I want the distance between two points, distance is the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. So what is the distance? If I'm going from the point 1, 0 to the point x, y, the change in x would be x minus 1. And the change in y would be y minus 0. So for example, let's say this point right here on our graph is the point x, y. The change in x, well, x minus 1 or 1 minus x, but when I square it, the point is moot. Change in y, y minus 0. So this is what I want to minimize. I'm going to want to minimize the square of the distance. So the square of the distance being x minus 1 squared plus y squared. Now, I only want one variable, though, to work off of. I want to minimize a function of one variable. So I have 4x squared plus y squared is 4, and you'll notice my equation here or my function I'm going to deal with has a y squared, but I can certainly solve this for y squared. So y squared is 4 minus 4x squared, and then I can replace this y squared with the 4 minus 4x squared. So what I get is, is I get distance squared is x minus 1 squared plus 4 minus 4x squared. That is the distance squared for any point on this ellipse to the point 1, 0 here. Multiplying that out, x minus 1 squared, x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 4 minus 4x squared. This is what I want to maximize. I want to find the value of x that gives us the largest distance. To minimize the distance, obviously the point 1, 0 would be the closest to 1, 0. It would give us a distance of 0. But I want to find the maximum value, the point x, y on this ellipse that is the farthest away from the point 1, 0. So this is the function I have to optimize. So here's our question. Here's our function I want to optimize. Let's simplify the algebra. x squared minus 4x squared is negative 3x squared. Minus 2x, 1 plus 4 is 5. To optimize this, I'm going to use the critical values by taking the first derivative. First derivative here, f prime of x is negative 6x minus 2. Set the first derivative equal to 0. So 0 is negative 6x minus 2. Add 2 to both sides. 2 is negative 6x. Divide by negative 6. And I get 2 over negative 6, or negative 1 third is x. So here's 0, here's negative 1, negative 1 third about here. So I've got this point where x is negative 1 third, and this point where x is negative 1 which seems reasonable to me that those might be the points that have the greatest distance from 1, 0. We've got to do a little bit of analysis to find out what that is, and I've got to convince myself it's really a maximum. Well, let's take the second derivative here. If f prime of x is negative 6x minus 2, the second derivative is negative 6. Second derivative is negative 6. What does that tell me? That tells me that the thing is concave down. If it's concave down, I know I'll have a maximum value. That distance indeed will be maximized when x is negative one-third. What did I use there? I used the second derivative test. So I know when x is negative one-third, that is the farthest distance I'm going to get from the point one zero. Well, let's find out what y is. We know we're on the ellipse 4x squared plus y squared is 4. x is negative one-third. 4 times negative 1 third squared plus y squared is 4. Negative 1 third times negative 1 third is 1 ninth. So I get 4 times 1 ninth or 4 ninths plus y squared is 4. So y squared is 4 minus 4 ninths. 4 times 9, let's see, 36 ninths minus 4 ninths. y squared is 32 ninths. Square root of 32, I believe, is 4 root 2. So I get y is plus or minus 4 root 2 over 3. So that will be the pair of points at negative 1 third, positive 4 root 2 over 3, negative 1 third, negative 4 root 2 over 3 that will give us the greatest distance from the point 1, 0. 
So let's visualize that. There's the point one zero, negative one third, four root two over three, negative one third, negative four root two over three. And again, that distance, you can see the distance would be the same based on symmetry. And that certainly seems reasonable. Those two points would be the farthest from one zero. Okay, let's take a look at another example. It says a rectangle is to be inscribed in a semicircle of radius 2. What is the largest area the rectangle can have, and what are the dimensions? So how do we build that rectangle to be the largest rectangle we can inscribe in a semicircle of radius 2? So here's a circle centered at the origin of radius 2. Circle of radius 2, x squared plus y squared equals 4. We pick some point P on there so that the rectangle we have is going to have the largest possible area. So we need to figure out what is the height of that rectangle and what is the width of that rectangle. Well, you can see from here to here, from 0 to x, that part is x. From 0 to negative x, that length is also x. So the width, the distance from negative x to positive x, that distance is 2x. Now from here to here, that's the point y. If this is a point x, y, p is the point x, y, the distance from the x axis up to that point would just be y. So the height of this rectangle is y, the width of this rectangle is 2x. Well, if that's the case, we know what the area is. Area is height times width, or length times width. So the area of that rectangle that's in red on my picture here would be 2x times y. Now, can I find out what y is? Well, I have this equation, circle of radius 2, x squared plus y squared is 4. So I can certainly solve for y. y squared is 4 minus x squared. y would be plus or minus. But you can see on our picture here, y is just positive. So y will be the square root of 4 minus x squared. So now I have one variable. The area of this red rectangle was 2xy. But 2xy will be 2x times the square root of 4 minus x squared. This is the function that I want to optimize. So I will do that by taking the critical value. How do I get that? Take the first derivative, set it equal to 0, and then solve. So here we go. u is going to be 2x, so u prime is 2. v is going to be the square root of 4 minus x squared or 4 minus x squared to the 1 half power. So let's think about how those derivatives are going to work. So yes, we're using the product rule. u is 2x, v is the square root of 4 minus x squared. But the square root of 4 minus x squared is the same as 4 minus x squared to the 1 half power. So what is v prime? Pull the 1 half down front. 1 half, 4 minus x squared to the 1 half minus 1, which is negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside, thanks to the chain rule, which is negative 2x. 1 half times negative 2x is negative x. 4 minus x squared to the negative 1 half, which would move it downstairs and make it 4 minus x squared to the positive 1 half, which will give us negative x over the square root of 4 minus x squared. So a little challenging work here with the chain rule. Uh, u is 2x, u prime is 2. That's pretty obvious. Then we need to use the product rule, u prime v, so 2 times the square root of 4 minus x squared, plus uv prime, plus 2x times negative x over the square root of 4 minus x squared. What is that going to give me? 2 times the square root of 4 minus x squared minus 2x squared over 4 minus x squared. Now we've got to set this equal to 0, but let's simplify first. So how do we add the fractions? Top left times bottom right. 2 times root 4 minus x squared times root 4 minus x squared is 2 times 4 minus x squared minus 2x squared over root 4 minus x squared. Now, now why is that? Just to remind you how we add fractions, a over b plus c over d, a good strategy in calculus is a times d, upper left times lower right, plus b times c, lower left times upper right over b times d. b here is 1, a times d 
2 root 4 minus x squared times root 4 minus x squared to be 2 times 4 minus x squared. It'll become minus in this case. B, which is 1, times C, 1 times 2x squared minus 2x squared, divided by 1 times root 4 minus x squared, root 4 minus x squared. So that's what we get when we add the fractions together. 2 times 4 is 8, minus 2x squared, minus 2x squared. So I get 8 minus 4x squared over the square root of 4 minus x squared. Now, what do we do with this? We want to find the critical values, so we've got to take the first derivative and set it equal to 0. So if that whole thing equals 0, when is a fraction 0? A fraction is 0 when the top equals 0. So 8 minus 4x squared has to equal 0. Or 8 equals 4x squared. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Now, you remember in our picture, x was positive. So yes, if x squared is 2, x is plus or minus the square root of 2. But the way that we describe this is we thought of x as a positive number. Therefore, I'm going to say that x is the square root of 2. Let's take a look at our picture. So we believe that when x is the square root of 2, that is going to optimize this. It's going to give us either a minimum or a maximum. This time I'm going to use the first derivative test to convince myself that I am indeed getting the maximum value. Clearly the minimum value would be if x were 2 and y were 0. We would have no rectangle at all. That's our minimum possible thing. But let's emphasize that by looking at the first derivative test. So there is my first derivative, uh, a prime. So how about a prime of 0? Notice 0 is to the left of square root of 2. So 8 minus 4 times 0 squared over root 4 minus 0 squared. 8 over 2 is 4. So at 0, the function is increasing to the right of root 2. I chose root 3 because root 3 is more than root 2 and less than 2, which is where this would end. So root 3 squared would be 3. Root 3 squared is 3. 8 minus 12, negative 4 over 1, negative 4. So at root 3, the thing is decreasing. So at 0, it's increasing. At root 3, it's decreasing. So that gives us a picture, right? At 0, it's increasing. At root 3, it's decreasing. So square root of 2 is going to have to give us a maximum value. So textbooks don't always do this. I skip that step sometimes when it's obvious. But indeed, that rectangle will be maximized. We get a maximum value by the first derivative test, increasing to the left, decreasing to the right. Area is maximized when x is the square root of 2. So what about the y value? What do we know? Well, x squared plus y squared is 4. We said x is the square root of 2. So square root of 2 squared plus y squared is 4. 2 plus y squared is 4. y squared is 2. Y again in our picture is positive, so Y is the square root of 2 as well. So we get a maximum area when X is square root of 2 and Y is square root of 2, so we'll have squares on either side of the Y axis. And what is my area? My maximum area would be 2XY, 2 times square root of 2 times square root of 2, 2 times 2 is 4. So indeed, a maximum area of 4 when X is root 2 and Y is root 2, Again, square on this side, square on this side. Root 2 times root 2 would be 2 here. Root 2 times root 2, 2 there. 2 plus 2 is 4. That is our maximum area.